18 which they say has re resulted in a decrease in the amount of money available for these schools. The committee also expressed concern about the lack of qualified teachers and staff in special needs schools. They said that many of these schools are operating under untrained or under trained staff which is not the best interest of the students. The committee has at the same time rejected a proposal by the ministry to charge parents whose minors have special needs when according to the committee the parents should not pay any penny to boost the capitation. One thing we do not want uh, to hear as a committee is any funding proposal that proposes that a parent pays you heard them say 9,500 for some category of learners with uh, special needs. Uh, the national government, uh, through the budget and uh, appropriations committee, has allocated the, 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 the minister of education a cool, a whooping 650 billion. So we are telling them they must also uh, see to it that in their internal allocation uh, that they allocate uh, to these uh, uh, learners with the special needs. Some of the equipments used by these learners with disability are very expensive. We are told the brain is around 100 and uh, over 100,000. The ministry may need to up their game in terms of taking care of these children. The government of Kenya has taken upon itself to give the lion's share of budget to the Ministry of Education. But with that allocation, we are still hearing a lot of noise starting with students from the university they are not getting their money and then we are having these needy needy students we need the ministry of education to do better than they are doing right now don't have any policy of discrimination of any child are going forward with the adoption of the recommendations of the working party then um, some of those issues that are coming up will be addressed on to our next news item the Africa Climate Summit has kicked off in Nairobi with Monday set as ministerial day. The summit, which will run from today until Wednesday, will be a platform for discussions surrounding climate positive growth, emphasizing opportunities for economic growth through climate action, and the role of global southern countries. Notable attendees include Africa Union Chairperson Azali Ausmani, Kenyan President William Ruto, African Union Commission Chairperson Musa Faki Mahamat, and other prominent figures in the field of climate and environment. On Tuesday, the focus is on the spotlight on opportunities. The summit is being held under the theme of driving green growth and climate finance solution for Africa and the world. I welcome all the delegates who responded positively to Africa's call to gather at this inaugural Africa Summit. In order for us to imagine, design, and then build a future of prosperity for Africa and the world, you have just stepped into, uh, let me take that again, you have not just stepped into a conference hall. You have entered the future, a future ripe with potential driven by global 
partnerships committed to African prosperity, inclusive growth, and a livable planet for all of us. Clearly, therefore, this is no ordinary summit. We are not here just to talk about Africa or climate change in the usual way, which often accentuates our divisions. You all remember the North versus South, developed versus developing, polluters versus victims, and the whole of that uh, conversation. And even within our own government, sometimes we have conversations around economic development, so badly needed for us to achieve stable and dignified livelihoods, and is often cast as a trade-off with environmental stewardship as if they are mutually exclusive, when in actual fact they are positively reinforcing. and create a web. They can tie down a lion. This is an African saying, and collaboration should be the key. Thank you. Thank you so much. Allow me now, Mr. President, to invite the World Bank representative on behalf of local development partners, the, Mr. Kate Asen, who is the World Bank country director, who will speak on behalf of the FLOCA partners. Program. Welcome, Kate. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, it is an honor for us to be up here as the World Bank on behalf of our development partners to celebrate this first in the world national scale model of devolved climate finance. But in that vein, I want to start on a note of humility. It is an honor for the World Bank to be up here, but we are here only as the members of a large and strong partnership of development partners who helped bring FLOCA into being, as you see from this rich tableau over here. So I'd like to take just a moment, if you would join me, in recognizing the representatives of the countries who helped make this happen. In alphabetical order, if I could ask first, stand up a representative from Denmark for recognition. Thank you, sir. From Germany. From the Kingdom of the Netherlands. Thank you, Ambassador. And from Sweden. And Sweden actually planted the seed with the original pilot finance and ideas that grew into this mighty tree that is now the Floka. This began in a few counties as a pilot, and Kenya quickly saw the opportunity to grow this to help it fulfill its largest and most ambitious climate commitments and engage its citizens, recognizing that there is no solution at the local level without involving the local level. In that sense, this is an excellent illustration of the old saying, think globally, act locally. FLOCA does three important things. First of all, it has flipped the script on finance. Until now, less than 10% of climate finance has gone to the local level, even though, as His Excellency the President said this morning, that is where the impact, of course, is most acutely felt. FLOCA aims to redress that by bringing money right down to the grassroots level. Second, it has created no new structures. It builds on the strong devolution structures that Kenya already has in place. It helps to strengthen the county systems and capacity to transfer money and technical capacity to the local level. And in that sense, it also serves as a platform to, for development partners to coordinate and to crowd in additional finance from others. But third and most important, it recognizes and it respects the local expertise in what it takes to respond and to take advantage of the opportunities of climate. Using the participatory, participatory climate risk assessment and action planning tool, it engages the communities, marrying the latest science with the community's own knowledge of their situation so they can shape their own solutions and their own response to the climate crisis. In that vein, it is truly the best of both worlds. It works very simply. There are two grants that FLOCA gives. One is to county 
uh, governments to help build their capacity to work with the communities to assess the risk and prioritize their investments in resilience. And then the second is a larger grant to help finance those actions at the local level. So we are delighted that the first assessment and action plans have now been delivered by 44 of Kenya's counties. And today we will be launching the first investment grants for all of them. This is a terrific achievement. <clears throat> And of course, Kenya aims to be a model for other countries, and that is exactly what we're seeing with FLOCA. This has become a powerful and a vital model, even in its infancy, to engage the most vulnerable people and to inspire other countries to learn and perhaps adapt. The Prime Cabinet Secretary, Msalia Mudavadi, is in Zimbabwe for the inauguration of President Emerson Mnagangwa. Mudavadi will be representing President William Ruto in the ceremony that is ongoing in Harare on Monday, September 4th, 2023. Mnagangwa is assuming office for the second term as the president of Zimbabwe. He was declared the president-elect after winning 52.6% of the votes beating his main competitor, Nelson Chamisa, of the Citizens' Coalition for Change, who got 44% of the vote. I, Priscilla Makanya Rajigumba, the chairperson of the Zimbabwe Electoral Commission, in terms of section 110, subsection 3, do hereby declare that Munangagwa Emerson Dambuzo of ZANU PF Party has received 2,350,711 votes out of 4,468,730 valid votes cast, which are more than half the number of valid votes cast in the presidential election. Therefore, Munangagwa Emerson Dambuzo of ZANU PF Party is declared duly elected president of the Republic of Zimbabwe with effect from 26 August 2023. On to our next news item. The Azimio La Umoja One Kenya and Kenya Kwanza Coalition have locked horns over President William Ruto Mambo Nitatu threat to sugar cartels. Azimio leader Raila Udinga has condemned the threat, saying it is a serious insult to the right to life. He has also accused Ruto of being a threat to national security. Odinga has urged Ruto to engage all leaders in the discussion to end the wars in the sugar subsector, warning him against threatening to kill investors. Kenya Kwanza leader Musalia Mudavadi has defended Ruto saying the threat was not a threat to anyone. He has accused Odinga of being hypocrite saying he has also made threats against his opponents in the past. <laughs> Sasa wewe ndio Mungu ambaye tunataka watu wa mbinguni. Siona Kenya imearabika. Si Kenya si imearabika. Kenya ambayo inatawaliwa kwa njia ya kidemokrasia, serikali yenyewe inafuata sheria, kama mtu amefanya makosa anashtakiwa, alafu yeye bila bila anajitetea, kisha kipatikana na na, 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 na makosa anapewa hukumu na mahakama kama hakuna makosa yeye anawachwa in speech making we have what we call imagery speeches figurative speeches allegories and we also have parables yala alisema wale wanamasikia wamesikia wale wana akili wameelewa lakini tumeona wale wapinzani ambao wanapenda kupinga kila kitu Hiyo wamerukia pia. 
Anybody who defends the corrupt is an enemy of the people of Kenya. Sasa huyu governor wa hapa Narok. Naonekana yeye bado wanalala sana. Lafu yeye anaongea na mjiju yangu kama mimi ni milika yake. Shenzi sana. Sasa ni mtu mjinga. Anaongea juu ya ODM ati watu wa Ajio toke ODM waende si wapi? Yeye alijua ODM iliundwa wakati gani? <laughs> On to our next news item. The government will roll out construction of Huduma centers in all the 290 sub-counties under the Huduma Kenya Digitalization Plan. Announcing the plan, public service, gender and affirmative action, Cabinet Secretary Aisha Jumwa said the move is aimed at bolstering government service delivery by bringing them closer to Mwananchi. The CS spoke during the closing of the first annual Huduma Center Managers Conference in Mombasa, where she hinted at collaborating with NGCDF to explore the possibilities of funding the construction of the sub-county Huduma Centers. In Huduma Kenya Digitization Plan, we have embarked and earmarked to roll the construction of 290 Huduma Centers in 290 constituencies. This year, we will construct a number of Huduma centers and shall seek additional fund, funding to roll out the construction of sub-county Huduma centers to bring services closer to Mananchi and save millions of shillings citizen use to access Huduma centers as Huduma centers are located at only headquarters with the exception of Nairobi and Kajiado counties that have five and two centers respectively. We are also collaborating with National Government Constituency Development Fund to explore the possibility of funding and uh, the construction of the sub-county Huduma Centers. Huduma Kenya has operationalized three additional platforms, namely the Huduma Machinani Outreaches that take services to far-flung areas. B, government-owned Huduma Contact Center that provides first level and second level escalation for all complaints, inquiries, and updates to Kenyans via telephone and social media, and C, Huduma e and m platform that provides whole of government information to citizens through Huduma website www.hudumakenya dot g o k e and the u s s d code star one nine one star nine hash these channels have served over one hundred and twenty million customers over the last ten years offering in person and assisted services on to our last news item the National Council of Churches of Kenya is leading talks to retain peace in the Kericho Kisumu border. Last week, NCCK organized two meetings, one at Onyogo and the other at Sigowet Soin. At the Onyogo Forum, religious leaders, Nyumbakumi leaders, village elders, cross-border peace committee members, community members, anti-stock theft unit personnel, 
and National Government Administration of officials, led by the Deputy County Commissioner, jointly assessed the root cause of the cross-border conflict. According to NCCK, theft of cattle and incitement by politicians were found to be the key drivers of the crisis at the border of the two counties.